actually came two years from him from being paralyzed. In fact, he had the same he had the fraction of the same vocation at Christopher Reeves and Superman. And um, he was in a, a halo, a non invasive halo, for almost four months because he also had a fractured skull. Um, he was under orthopedic care for 10 months. And 2010, he had just been released from orthopedic care. It wasn't even two months. Um, him and I were walking down Jefferson Avenue. He had just actually had just got his brace taken off his neck. And the police officer and my son were talking or whatever. Another son. So the officer told my son, just go. He was like, go. So now I'm trying to catch up with my son to find out what was going on because he seemed to be upset. So the officer grabbed me for no reason. Now, they're not retaining my son. They're telling him to go. And he's walking down the street. And I'm a citizen walking behind him. And they grabbed me. And so my 14-year-old, who has a lot of brain injury, he was a new and brain injury at the time. So the officer grabbed his mom. And he tells the officer, get off my mom. The officer begins, he proceeds towards my son. I'm like, okay, I know you're going to do that. This is a little kid. Great big old office. It happened right in uh, number four in the field. So I'm seeing the officer grab my son, and I'm like, and he's dragging my son from the sidewalk to the field. I'm like, get off my son's neck. He just recovered from a broken neck, a C2 fracture. So then I'm telling the officer that was close by me, I said, can you please tell your colleague to get off my son's neck? He just recovered from a fracture, C2. So he proceeded to drag my son in the field. Then he takes my baby by his neck and flips him on the ground. Okay? So now I'm trying to get to the officer that's flipping my baby by his neck because I don't want my son to be paralyzed. So now they're trying to retain me, and that's just not happening, you know. So anyway, I get thrown down. You know, I hit the officer. Yes, I did. You know, because I'm defending. I'm trying to get to my baby because no one doesn't know what I have went through. I'm pushing the officer out of my way so I can get to the other officer because I'm seeing them don't get ready to throw my baby on the ground by the neck. And I ended up getting um, thrown down on the ground, handcuffed. After I was handcuffed, I was then maced. Uh, then they took me somewhere, and they're sitting there discussing what they were going to charge me with. i like, okay, I said, I don't care what y'all charge me with. The only thing I'm concerned about right now is my son. And then they take my son to a juvenile facility out of his side. My baby didn't do anything. And he ended up being there for like a day or two and, you know, just going through the system. And I'm, I lived here in Rochester. I've been here since 1983. And when I first came to Rochester, I never, ever, I'm from Elmira, New York. Not to say that there wasn't prejudice going on, you know, when I was coming up. I wasn't exposed to it. We weren't exposed to it. It was the rich kids, the white kids, white, black, it doesn't matter. We all got along. Come to Rochester, New York, and then I realized, oh, something's different. The people are different. The people are so cold. And I'm talking about Caucasians and I'm talking about the African Americans. Did you get the police officer's name? You know what, at this particular time I didn't because at the time that it happened, I was just concerned about my son. So I got bailed out so I could go to Hillside to see about my son. Then they took him to the hospital, you know, and all that. But the whole thing was unnecessary. You know, so directly, indirectly, yes, I am a victim. And I see you know, things happening in our community. Our children are seeing these things, and this is what's important. You know, our kids, their officers, children are supposed to feel safe when they see an officer. They're supposed to be able to say, well, you know what, I might be in a lot of things are wrong, but I see a police officer, and I can go to that officer, and that officer will help me. But guess what, our kids in our community is not seeing that from the officers. And I just want to encourage you, Chief um, Shepard, that there's like a bridge. And you're like, you could be right in the middle of the bridge to help carry us over so that we can come to one meeting place.
know. But you know, you're that you're that tool right there for your officers. We have the the uh, clergymen here for the community. You know, so there's a we can start someplace. We can start today because we have the chief right here. But I just want to encourage you to step forward and do the right thing. Amen.
tight knit it here in New York State. And um, it took 35 years for me to get diagnosed. I got diagnosed in 2010 without prejudice. And I took the, the diagnosis to my doctor. He sent me to Rochester General. Brought me in Rochester Central to cripple me. I'm just getting up out of wheelchair now. And when I have been in the nursing home for 18 months, not being able to walk or stand up for anything. And I never got any help for the injury. In 1971, my spinal cord got caught between two discs in my back. And I never had a doctor say anything about me about this injury. And I had all of this 